The question that we have here, Sean Roy and many others have asked, uh, uh, why can't researchers rely on state funding to tackle this problem? And why does it look like, at least, governments aren't really interested in doing anything about this, given that it's such a real problem with population demographics that mm -hmm. should be known? Yeah, there's a whole network of reasons why it's difficult to get funding for this kind of research, either from government or, for that matter, from the private sector. But I believe that the single most profound underlying reason is pure psychology. People are just so terrified of aging that their only way of putting it out of their minds and getting on with their miserably short lives is to pretend that aging is actually some kind of blessing in disguise and or that it's actually just a kind of law of nature and there's never anything that can be done about it. This, to my mind, is the basis for the extraordinary persistence of this utter fiction that there are some aspects of aging which are diseases and can be cured and some aspects that aren't and are in some sense aging itself which has no biological basis whatsoever but yet is extremely entrenched in society um, and so you know i think the only way that we can um can fix this we can improve the situation is to do two things number one to actually make whatever progress we can incrementally in the lab every little bit of progress that's made makes a difference you know in terms of the perceived feasibility and plausibility of all of this and secondly just to keep the conversation going to keep you know pointing out how embarrassingly infantile the objections to this work are and to, um, you know, to, 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 to raise the quality of the debate all the time, to give good answers again and again, however often those answers are ignored to all the questions that people have, all the concerns that people have, and just to raise the credibility. And of course, the more this work, and that also is a bootstrapping, you know, positive feedback thing. Every time that somebody with a lot of credibility comes into the field, you know, we mentioned Craig Venter earlier on, um, you know, equally Google, of course, it kind of doesn't matter whether those people actually make important scientific contributions. They are making a huge contribution just by attaching their name to this crusade. Absolutely. Now, is there, you know, before you have to go, is there anything in particular that you'd like to, you know, implore the audience to help out with, whether yeah, financially sure. or, you know, boots yeah, on the yeah. ground? Yeah, let me do that. Yeah. I'll just take one minute on that. So, Sense Research Foundation, of course, is a non-profit, and we are funded overwhelmingly by philanthropy. But, as I've mentioned, and as most of the audience probably know, um, many of our projects have now been spun out into private startup companies and also of course there are other companies working in very very closely related to us in the same space that we work closely with so from the point of view of someone who is interested in supporting this work financially there is a huge temptation just to go and you know invest in these companies and to leave the foundation alone that is a huge mistake that we constantly have to um highlight because the reason the foundation still exists and we have not just declared victory and closed ourselves down is because there are still a number of absolutely vital projects which have not yet reached the point of investability and therefore which continue to need to be funded in this way. And of course, from the point of view of an investor, it makes sense to do both because if you give us significant amounts of money as a philanthropic gesture, then what you do is you get access. You get all the information because we tend to be very nice to you and have you, you know, come along to our lab and hear what we're doing and all that. Um, you get information that will allow you to be the first investor, the lead investor in some new spin-out when it's ready. In fact, that was exactly what happened with our very first spin-out, the one that's focused on our atherosclerosis work. It was, create, uh, it was a company created by a guy who had been giving us proper money for the previous five years or so and um, he, re he decided that this project was far enough along to be worth um, taking private so he did and um, you know that is exactly the kind of thing that could happen again and again so we think that the critical thing to get out there the critical message to get out there is that the foundation and other nonprofits, for that matter not just us but mainly us um, we act as the engine room of this industry our goal has always been to create an industry, and we are certainly doing so, but there's a long way to go, and we definitely need the engine room to, be continue, to continue to be funded well.